In this video, I am going to show you how to create a model within Rails. This particular video is based off of Chapter 6 of our text for this semester, The Agile Web Development with Rails 5, text by Sam Ruby. So, what we need to do is add a model to our application. Uh, in previous videos, I've shown you how to create a controller, uh, how to create the application in the first place, um, how to create a controller, uh, even create the database and start it up and whatnot. But what we need to do is to create a model um, that uh, uh, also an important part of the model view controller um, trio or that, ar that uh, architectural style. So in this case, we are going to create something called a product. So you can imagine an application that is essentially a, a store for a purchase of products. And in these products, or at least the information for the product, um, our metadata is going to include things like titles, a description, an image for a picture of the product, and then price. Now what's going to happen in Rails is that a database table is going to be created called products, so pluralization of product. And it's going to have, um, it's going to have columns uh, named each one of these. It's also going to create an implicit column called ID, which is going to be a uh, primary key for, uh, for the database table, um, as well as a timestamp for when things are added to our tables. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. I've started up the Postgres server, so that's up and running. I know that if, uh, well, if you haven't started that up um, and you run uh, the commands, I'm going to show you that you will get an error. Uh, and so I'm going to go ahead and run the following command, so Rails generate. We saw this before, Rails generate, but we did it to, uh, to create a controller. Here we're going to say scaffold. And basically what we're doing is telling Rails to create all of the stuff that's needed for a model. And the name of this model is product. So um, the next set of parameters are each of those, um, those attributes that I mentioned before. So I'm just going, going to go ahead and type those in. Price is a decimal. Okay, so when I run this, uh, Rails will do a number of things, uh, generate a number of, uh, of files that we need for um, for the model. Um, you'll see some things here for uh, for migration. We'll take a look at that here in a moment. Um, it's creating a number of files for the views that we're going to use. These views are basically a default view for the, uh, for the product object. Um, you see that it's created a controller for the, the object, so we'll see that. Um, we'll take a look at that file. As well as uh, uh, views for um, showing all the products, and so that's, uh, we see that here um, in these files. And then a little bit of SC, uh, some CSS basically to uh, uh, to display the objects. So now that that's been created, uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually run um, and apply the migration that was created for this uh, for this product object. And I, before I do that, I want to show you that migration. Um, and so in the DB directory, you'll see a migrate directory and here is the file with the migration that was created. And basically what this is doing is saying hey create a product, sorry create a table called products uh, with these columns uh, as well as an implicit one that we didn't specify. These are the ones we specified. There's the one that we didn't specify but also there's another one that's, that's been created that's the the ID which um, we don't see here in the migration because it's just um, automatically generated. Okay, so what we need to do is run a migration on this file. 
And so I'm going to type in Rails DB migrate. This is going to run our migration. Uh, this essentially creates the table within our database. So I'm going to go ahead and run that. And so you see here that it tells us it's, that it's migrating, uh, created a table called products, and that uh, and then everything's been migrated. Okay, so that's all. Uh, that's all done. So uh, really. What, uh, what we get from doing this is a bunch of automatically generated code. Uh, and some of these are, are actually re really important for, uh, for actually viewing the, uh, uh, viewing the objects, viewing the instances that are created in the application. So let's really quickly take a look at this. So I'm going to run the server. And let's see what we get in the application. So open this. I don't recall if I had. OK, so here's um, this is our base application saying, hey, yeah, yeah, I'm on Rails. But let me take a look at the slash products directory. And see what's displayed there. So this is a view that was created automatically by Rails and you'll see here that there is a link that allows me to create a product. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and there's another view that comes up and this is the view that uh, also was generated by Rails but you see that you know it's a form that's already created for us for being able to add in new products. So I'm going to add um, a product for, um, let's just call it Android phones. Android phones by Jerry. So that's my product. Um, this is a phone made by Jerry Gnod with the Android OS. I don't have an image to show right now, so I'm going to leave that blank. And I'm going to say that this thing costs $350. I'm going to click on Create Product. So what this is doing is this is executing, some again, some automatically generated code um, that uh, uh, provides this view into the data that I just uh, entered. If I click on Back, gives me now a list of products that are currently in my database. The other thing I wanted to show you here is that it automatically has a show, edit, and destroy um, operation that I can apply. Um, for instance, if I click on show, that should, this gives me the view that we saw before of the, um, the data was, that was stored. I can also edit this data. This is the interface that was automatically generated for that. And then I can also delete the object. They asked me whether or not I want to delete it. Um, let's go ahead. Let's delete it and see what we get. I should get a blank page. Okay, so that's that was already automatically generated. And in the next video, we will see each one of these uh, these views, the controllers. Um, as we browse through um, the results of running that, uh, that Rails generate scaffold command. So anyway, that concludes this video. The next one we'll see each of those uh, views and the controllers um, that were created